我的我的，大家好，我是唢呐。大嘻哈时代第八集 ，just might be the best episode of this season. And today, I'm gonna tell you why. This episode had so much heat, vibes, culture, and so many acts of badass motherfuckery. I don't even know where to begin. So. I'm gonna break down my favorite and top moments of this episode. But before I begin, 大嘻哈时代，你过来，我要和你讲起来吼。The air horn, which originated with Jamaican dancehall culture, was meant to signify whenever someone drops some serious bars or whenever someone says or does something that is straight up church. It is not to be constantly and randomly used for any moment that you see fit. 大西哈时光，接下来加油 ！Y'all had a motherfucker out there who just kept pressing the air horn button as if it was going out of style. It's like when you find a treasure map that will lead you to the also sought after but rarely found G spot. And when you do find that spot, instead of enjoying and caressing. Building up, you keep pressing and pressing and pressing and pressing and pressing until old girl is numb and almost in pain. I know you're excited to have it and you're excited to use it, but nigga, timing is everything. So chill. <laughs> oh man. Also, I don't know if any of you guys noticed the Easter egg in this episode. Seems to be a recurring thing. Last episode, there was an Easter egg with the shout out to Three Six Mafia. And this episode, they have a very clever Easter egg. During Shontai's 88 Bars performance, there is a cameo appearance of another person with 88 in their name. That's right, month. Bye bye, nine. <laughs> It's in the ad libs of 88 bars. <laughs> This version was like 88 bars. <laughs> the remix. All right, so on to the performance, and there was a lot of heat in this first round. It started off with cheating and Han 老师。感谢伤害我的人，让我心能断裂。哎，大姐，你这样真的太急。我不是小学生的作文课 ，I don't give a shit. And their shit was dope. They really can correct with the '90s R&B TLC SWV. You probably have no idea what the f- these letters mean, but these were the icons in '90s R&B. Cheating and Han 老师 really captured that vibe. And damn, cheating! Homegirl did not let up on B R. Oh God! If the program is forced, you and your ex partner have to have sex. Uh, thank you, Pinkson, for getting her fired. B R ain't catching no breaks and ain't getting no love in this episode, son. And by the end of the first performance, I was like, oh, they got it for sure. They got it. Then Pink Chain and K I step on stage. <sighs> 还是孩子的我分裂成两个人在教室，一个想涂鸦，另一个想涂鸦。It was like Super Mario and Luigi were on stage delivering bars. Real talk, Ki completely switched his shit up in this one. 就好像这一边和那一边，左边和右边，东边和西边连在一起。Bitty bada boom. I can only imagine what was going on backstage. Between the two, K. I was like, ah, I really feel like I can't open up. Ah, Pink Chain, what do I do? My friend, la, Pinky, motherfucker. And he gave that motherfucker some mushrooms. He took one bite, and it was like, <laughs> my man was goofy as, <laughs> but in the best way. It was so cool to see K. I. 2.0 on stage, really let himself go, man. And these. 
2 put on a performance that is one of the most unique performances I have seen in the entire show. And I enjoyed all the little nuggets and shout outs to rappers. <laughs> Such as Waka Flaka Flame. <laughs> and my personal favorite, OT Genesis. <laughs> so to you two on stage, sis hey. <laughs> I really enjoyed your show. So by this point, I was like, shit, you've got cheating, Han Lao Si, Pink Chain, and K.I. Who's gonna be able to top this shit? Bucky, Niyam Zama Xuan. But then, the most culturally rich and authentic Taiwanese hip hop event happened before my eyes. Whenever Gambler and Yappy rode the fuck out on Jita. <laughs> These guys represented and embodied the whole idea of what it means to take something that is considered low or thillian and make it cool. Because that is how our culture, that is how hip hop culture started. We were looked down upon. Our culture was made to be viewed as less than and not worth anything. And we flipped it. And that is exactly what they did with the Taika culture. That was so fucking dope. And the energy between the two was fucking unmatched. They took two of the most endangered languages on this island and made it something special. If you were to put these two on stage at South by Southwest or Coachella or any international festival, it would be like, yo, this is Taiwan Shiha, undeniable, dude. That shit was really dope. Salute to you guys, mad respect. Seriously, that shit is And to top it all off, they created something that we never knew even existed. But it does now, motherfucker. Welcome to Taiwan Zuan. <laughs> now, in the final part, Shouzai, I imagine that motherfucker was Maotun as fuck because you had some of the most talented rappers kind of drop the ball. But I was really excited when they brought Tanto back because that motherfucker has been hustling hard and he's got mad skills. Shout out Tanto, you got the key, 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 key. I got a key, I got a key, I got a key, key, key. I love you, brother. You got a second chance. Don't fuck that shit up. But. Popo J and MC Ba Ba Nan held it down and represented proper for all you motherfuckers under Eat by Cheese and Golden Fun. Shit. My man Ba Ba Nan up there with a flak jacket looking like he's got clips on clips. Ammo on ammo, rapid fire. <laughs> These two were the greatest on stage. I have been looking forward and hoping that they would be on stage together, and it was great to finally see that shit happen, dude. These guys weren't pulling any punches when it came to the punchlines, the bars, the interactions back and forth. There were no slip ups on this stage, dude. And that was so great to see. So as this season progresses, you are seeing people forced to go outside of their comfort zone and be more authentic. But all in all, this is my favorite episode so far. There was so much talent and so much improvement from all the way back when you saw them in episode one. And that is what is so great about this show, is to see people evolve and really push themselves. Despite eating the guanji, despite being tired as fuck, despite real life shit getting in your way, you're still holding it down to the true spirit of hip hop. So, shout out to you guys. 
I want to know who you're rooting for. Who do you think will win Da Xia Sedai and who do you want to win? Leave a comment down below, like, subscribe. See you next time. Peace.